Thank you to everyone who got me here and everyone who has come to listen. My father lived in the apartment above the original Sweeney's Grocery. I stole the name from my painting studio so I'd have an excuse to tell a story. The story today is about how family and painting hold me together. For years, I have struggled with depression. I'm forcing myself to discuss it for the first time publicly because I want to share my coping and healing mechanisms. They are varied, but they all revolve around painting and family. The bonus, for me, comes when on occasion people pay me for the product of that mechanism. There is no easy button. Thomas Kincaid's real life provided a sad bookend to his bucolic renderings. <laughs> Tony Robbins has no chicken soup for me. Mine is loaded with doctors, prescriptions, a lot of family, attempts at regular sleep and exercise, and painting, always painting and drawing. Evidence of use. Items from my grandparents' store carry evidence of use. So do all of my paintbrushes mainly because they're still being used. There's strength in things that have history. Make as many mistakes as possible, as quickly as possible. Make your own history. In the 1980s, this strange Captain Mark fella had an equally strange drawing TV program, and I watched it all the time. It gave me a foundation for an understanding of perspective, axonometric, and isometric drawings. I never realized until I was in architecture school that those doodles would lead me toward Piranese, Brunelleschi, and eventually the remarkable architecture in Florence, Florence, which would provide me an opportunity to make the obligatory watercolor of a student abroad. <laughs> architecture and figure has always driven my work. Evidence of a drawing's history will play a role in its completion. The physical path I hiked to get to that Salganatobel bridge in Switzerland completely changed how I painted it. Make no mistake, something happens when you put pen, paint, to paper. The trick is to actually do it. Do work. On occasion, I trick myself into working. I typically lay out some division of three panels, usually nine, in the hopes that one will work out well. Bruno Schulz was a Polish writer and draftsman who sadly was shot in 1942. His drawings and his words are captivating in a way that I find hard to describe. Look him up. Read Streets of Crocodiles. I wish I could convey the atmosphere the way he did. Knowing what he did, when he did it, gives me strength. You have not lived until you've tried to explain to a construction worker that there is no sex in a figure drawing class. <laughs> Studying at the Art Institute of Chicago while working as a rough framer gave me that chance. My figurative work there allowed me to combine body, volume, and space while honing my understanding of color and sharpening my rapier wit. <laughs> Steal from the best, Fight Club poached the idea of a decision being made under duress from Flannery O'Connor. O'Connor's misfit is much more elegant in my opinion. I have a series of weapons that I began painting a long time ago. The reaction to them is always visceral, regardless of color. I own no guns. I paint guns. I also paint flowers. A 10-foot 44 Magnum or an assault rifle, four times actual size, are two of the larger weapon paintings. I've always been drawn to figure ground work. There seems to be a tenuous shift between specific and abstract within that work that I do. And I often wonder or wish that I could mic one of my paintings or one of my shows. I'd love to know what those people thought. Sometimes graffiti must be covered, said someone at some point. I often dig the cover as much as or more than the covered. The figure in this last lithograph, this figure is the last lithographic print that I've pulled to date. I often put these two together simply because of the compositions and I like to stare at them. I loathed Ellsworth Kelly when, until I loathed Ellsworth Kelly's work and then I got an education. These days I can see his genius. Trying to understand my own process has shown me how remarkable he is. This Matthew Marks gallery in LA pulled the facade from this Kelly painting. It's pretty easy to see. 
I landed a commission of several pieces that allowed me to focus on my process. I set up a system for these pieces. I meshed the idea of my abstract work as a base, then overlaid a root five grid by hand, scraping, pulling, pushing tones within each piece. It was difficult for me to stop. Francis Bacon. I'm greedy for life. I'm greedy as an artist. I'm greedy for what I hope chance can give me far beyond anything I can calculate logically. His work has always astounded me and I love looking at his studio space because there's so much shit all over the place and I know what work he did in there. Though the space where work happens is important, it's not crucial. My studio in Connecticut on your right was posh compared to the unconditioned warehouse what, that I currently have. I typically work on the floor and the panels that I use can be inordinately large because it's a 7,000 square foot warehouse. Large figurative work requires a shift in process. I use brooms and my whole body rather than small brushes and gestures. Always shift gears. Channel Andy Goldsworthy with kids at the beach. Toss in some Frank Miller and Playmobil people. Laughter will ensue, I swear. <laughs> Be sure, whatever you do, you choose your tools wisely. Line weight is important in any drawing. So are construction lines. Don't erase them. I'm irrationally protective of all my writing implements and my books. Teach. These are hand-cut dovetails from a Clemson ITC studio I teach. Guess which one's the F and which one's the A. <laughs> it requires me to be direct and organized. Be involved with your kids. Be involved with kids. Coaching and making the design with our son for his soccer team for the last three years running is something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Find ways to involve kids, youngsters, any young people in art and making. It will change the way you do things for the better. This is the selfless promotion part. I have a solo show in Charleston in April. It's called Transit and Trash. Essentially an aesthetic study of containers and dumpsters because I see them every day. It's not a commentary on consumer society. My PSA, always say thank you. I can't thank you enough. You've all helped me remove a great weight. <laughs>